and let us all that we can to build a better future. Uh, let's get started with our first segment, and it has to deal with the story that we covered on Friday, the aftermath of Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez apologizing for her present vote. Now, again, before we actually get started with the article, before FaZe pull, uh, pulls up that article, I want to remind everyone that, you know, when Tulsi Gabbard was still in Congress, uh, AOC and a lot of other coveted blue checkmark people were saying, you can never vote present. You have to vote yes or no. There was a big finger wagging and everyone was telling, you know, you just, you just can't, you just cannot say present. It's either a yes or no vote. And of course, from yesterday, or not yesterday, but on Friday, you know, AOC was on this whole apology tour. And on Saturday, there was an article from Slate where basically Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez apologizes after voting present on the Iron uh, Dome uh, funding bill. She says, yes, I wept. Look, I don't know why you're crying. You're a lawmaker. You have to make difficult decisions all the time. Every single time you have to make difficult decisions. And as a politician, if you're incapable of really standing your ground or either that, standing up to your fellow colleagues, I have to say this, maybe this job is just too much for you. So Rep Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez penned a long emotional letter in which she explained her decision. Again, that letter was about four pages uh, on why she decided to vote president on the bill, even though she didn't really go into detail why she voted president. Uh, on a bill for, uh, to fund Israel's Iron Dome defense system, uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was seen crying after she switched her vote against the one billion bill to present, which essentially amounted to an abs abstention. Uh, the measure easily passed the House of Representatives 420 to 9. In the letter, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez criticized the deeply unjust process to get the bill to the House floor and approve quickly, as well as what she says as the way, uh, way so many in Washington are willing to go along with unconditional aid to the Israeli government. To which my response is, well, then why didn't you vote no, AOC? It's a yes or no. And the thing is, I remember your campaign in 2018, and you were very critical of the Israeli administration and the unjust policies that were being implemented on the Palestinian people. Furthermore, uh, Representative uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's three-page letter doesn't ever explicitly lay out her reasons for switching from a no to present, but she suggested it had to do with what she said was a rush to vote and the consequences. Uh, the reckless decision by House leadership to rush the controversial vote within a matter of hours and without true consideration created a tinderbox of vitriol, disingenuous framing, deeply racist accusations, and depictions. Uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wrote in a letter to her uh, congressional uh, represent or to our congressional voters uh, in New York's 14th congressional district. Um, I just wanted to say the congressional leadership is mama bear, Nancy Pelosi, you know, mama bear, the name that you gave her AOC, that's the name you gave her. And we all saw that video on C-SPAN where we saw ice cream, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi berating and yelling and waving her arms in that little old pink dress of hers. And then how you were being browbeaten and yelled at. You see, you're the one that also voted for her to become Speaker of the House again. So all this crying to me looks like as a way to kind of cover your ass. And it's downright despicable that here you are, an elected official, writing a three, four page letter about why you're sorry you voted present. You know, there's a lot of progressives and activists that went to bat for you that knocked on doors for you in 2018, as well as in your next re-election as well. And right now, a lot of people are eating crow because of your performative art. I mean, are, we, are you afraid to not to go to, uh, to any kind of gala events ever again? Are you afraid you're not going to be able to cover Vanity Fair? Because when you take a leadership position, and when you're also kind of the face of the squad and the progressive movement, or I don't know if you are the face of the progressive movement anymore, you have to take responsibility. You screwed up. And you turned your no to a present because you were being bullied. Or was that just a show as well? Who can ever tell with these politicians? Because at this point, they're all professional liars. She also uh, goes on to explain uh, her tears, saying that they related to the way she felt leaders were trying to rush the vote rather than hear substantive objections. Yes, I wept. I wept at the complete lack of care for the human beings that are impacted by these decisions. I wept at an institution choosing a passive maximum volatility and minimum consideration for its own political convenience, she wrote. And I wept at the complete uh, lack of regard I often feel our party has to its most vulnerable, endangered members and communities. 
So my response to that is then, stand your ground, push back. But maybe that's too much because w- way back in January, when progressives and activists were asking 15 congressmen and women, including you, AOC, because you were on that list, for the force to vote, none of you acknowledged that town hall that was hosted by Jimmy Dore, Brianna Joy Gray, Cornel West, and so many others. 100,000 plus people attended that town hall, and not a single member of those progressive representatives in the progressive caucus attended or even acknowledged it. But AOC, you had the audacity to say, especially when people are correcting you about forced vote, saying that it's violence or you don't like how people's tone or like how people are talking to you. Well, the way Nancy, Nancy Pelosi was talking to you was pretty violent. But hey, you voted present, and now the Israeli government is once again getting funded for its Iron Dome. I don't think you really care about progressive issues at this point, AOC, especially if you're going to start crying. Speaking of which, if you guys don't believe me, let's play this video here, and you get to see something incredible. It looks like Hollywood. It's like acting 101, and it's magnifique. Let's play that. Designated by Mr. Lawson of Florida, pursuant to House Resident i and for the House that Mr. Lawson will vote. Nay. There she is, Brian. On, on House Resident 483 Amendments. Wow. He votes nay. Barbara Lee, go on. there you go. For what purpose? Designated by Mr. Wait, Lawson of Florida, again. pursuant to House Resident 8, and for in the House that Ms. Lawson will vote nay. And pause it, pause it, pause it, on, pause it, on. pause it, pause it. All right. I see we got 209 people here in the live stream chat. I love all of you. So here's what I want you to do. We're going to participate in our own democracy. I'm going to give you two questions, okay? So everyone be at the ready. Type one, if you think, you know, AOC is truly remorseful uh, at her vote, her voting presence. Type two, if you think this is just performative art. And then finally, next question. Type three, if you think, if AOC is going to be pushed around like this, do you think she still has... Uh, okay, so hold on. Let, 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 let me rephrase this question. Since AOC is saying that she was pushed around by leadership, type three, if you think AOC still has what it takes to be in Congress, type four, if you think she should move aside if she's going to be bullied like that by the Democratic leadership. Because right now, we need people that are going to bring the ruckus. And if she's not going to bring the ruckus and she's going to sit here and write a letter about why she voted present, well then, you know what? I got to say, you got to step aside. It looks like crap. It smells like crap. And explain your reasons to people who are right now living in Gaza and the West Bank. Because at this point in time, AOC, all you've done is nothing but words and post out feel-good tweets. And yes, these are tweets that I agree with. What does Medicare for all mean for me? It means the world. What does a uh, $15,000, uh, what, what does a $1,500 uh, stimulus check mean to me? It means the world. What does uh, student debt forgiveness mean to me? It means the world. But see, the thing is, when you keep on making statements and words, and there's no action or deeds, I can't take you serious as a lawmaker. And we keep waiting for the progressives to fight back. We keep waiting for the progressives to do something. We keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And let's face it, nothing is going to fundamentally change if we rely on these politicians. So as a final note for this story, If we're going to fight for a better future, it's got to come from the people. If the people are going to bring in change, the people have to step up. We can't rely on politicians. They're just going to give us a windbag answer. So I guess all the memes are true. AOC is Mama Bear 2.0. As soon as Mama Bear steps aside, what Nancy Pelosi is, what, 88 years old? How the hell are you going to be bullied by an 88-year-old senior citizen? AOC, you 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 should know better because you know what's happening on the outside. But maybe you're blinded by being on the cover of Vanity Fair or being at these gala events or being invited to The View. Look, I get it. It sounds great. It looks like fun. But the thing is, Americans, American citizens are struggling day in and day out. And if you're going to give a weak sauce answer about why you voted present, maybe you need to step aside. Because so far, we're seeing nothing but words from you. And a big word salad apology. You don't go into detail why you, went to, why you voted president, except you got bullied. 
Everyone's getting bullied. But explain it to Americans right now that are at risk of being evicted from their homes. Explain it to college students and a lot of other people who are struggling with student debt. Explain it to families that are struggling with medical debt. Explain it to families right now that are dealing with the ever-growing threat of climate change. Explain that to people right now as we're still funding regime change wars and the military-industrial complex, but we don't have money for social programs? Right now, the progressives are going back and forth and breaking at this $3.5 trillion budgetary problem that we're seeing, this budgetary bill, and nothing's happening. I don't believe AOC. I don't believe her apology, and it seems like performative art to me.